Join me and learn to knit this fantastic super chunky jumper from Vicky Knits. Let's get started. So first of all, we're going to create this brilliant jumper using Paintbox Wool Mix Super Chunky. This is a really great, nice, cozy and warm jumper. So the wool will give it a little extra bit of, of warmth, but if you want to make it in just a plain acrylic Super Chunky, you can absolutely do that too. So the needles I've got are um, 10 millimeter needles. This is um, the shade Pistachio. And I would just want to show you, when we start off with this jumper, the first thing we're gonna do is to work the, um, the back. And we start off with a rib here, and this is six rows of rib, and then some nice old stocking stitch, stockinette, to go up the back of the jumper. So before we do this, we're gonna cast on now, if you've done our how to knit video, then you will have learnt the knitted cast on, but for this jumper, we're going to use something called a long tail cast on. And the benefit of that is that it gives us lots of stretch. So, um, we take the yarn and just one of the needles, and because it's called the long tail cast on, we create, to start with, a long tail. So I'm going to just unravel lots of this. Now, we're going to, cast on in this particular example i'm going to cast on 56 stitches because i'm making the extra large size of this jumper but your pattern will show you exactly how many you need to cast on make sure you just give yourself a really nice long tail it doesn't matter if you've got too much because you can um, use it for something else later and snip it off now this cast on begins with a slip knot and to create the slip knot with what we do is we make a loop in the yarn and then I'm just going to take the working yarn which is the one attached to the ball and pull it through the hole there and when you pull it creates a little slip knot I'm just going to do that again for you so we just make a loop and then pull the working yarn through the loop and tighten by pulling and that creates a slip knot and the slip knot you can tighten by just pulling the working yarn so I'm going to pop my needle now into the loop of our slip knot and just tighten up <clears throat> now when we create um, a long tail cast on the way that we position our hands is like this so you will have the needle in front of you you're going to have the working yarn and that is the yarn attached to the ball the furthest away from you over there. And then you're gonna have the tail of the yarn, the one not attached to the wall in front, right up closest to you. So we hold the needle here. What I'm gonna do is to get you to hold your fingers in a little pincer movement like that and put them in between those two yarns. Then just grab the bottom of those two yarns with your bottom fingers there. And if you open those fingers up, it comes into a little diamond and then you just bring the needle down. So to create a stitch, we put the point of the needle into the one by my thumb, into the loop by my finger, and then just pull. So I'll show you again. Put your fingers in, grab at the bottom, and just open your fingers up so it comes down into a V. Then I'm gonna put this tip of the needle into the one, the piece of yarn by my thumb, and then take it over to the piece of yarn by my finger and loop it through, and then release and pull. And that creates a stitch. Let's do that really slowly. So we put your fingers in between the two yarns and grab at the bottom to secure them. Pull the needle down, and then you nip the tip of the needle under the thumb yarn and then across and under your finger yarn. And then just pull and it creates a stitch. Let's do it again. Fingers in a pincer, through the two there and grab at the bottom. Open your fingers up and bring the yarn down, bring the needle down. Then we're gonna go through that one and that one. So I'm gonna go under the thumb and over and under the finger, bring it through and pull. Let's do that again. Fingers through the two yarns, grab at the bottom, 
open the fingers up and bring the needle down. Then we go under the thumb, over and under the finger, pull it through and down. Let's do it again. Through with your finger pincers, grab the bottom of the yarn. Open up your fingers, bring the yarn down. So we go under the thumb, under your finger and pull. And you see it gives you a really nice pretty edge which is also nice and stretchy which is what you want for a jumper. Also a really good cast on for hats or anywhere where you've got a little bit of a rib. Now I'm going to cast on 56 stitches because I'm making the extra large version and I shall see you back here when you've cast on. Okay so now I've cast on my 56 stitches uh, because this is the extra large size. Um, you can see that it's just such a great edge there uh, and it looks really really pretty. These needles are probably a bit short for this size but this is what I had. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this little bit of rib here. Now so far I know with the um, Learn to Knit video you learned how to do the garter stitch and so we're going to introduce something called purl when we do the rib and this stockinette. So the rib stitch is created by working one plain stitch and one purl stitch alternated throughout. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we begin with your knit stitch. So I'm going to put the needle into the stitch, bring the yarn around the front, under and off. I'm sure you remember that one. And then the next stitch is going to be a purl stitch. And so I'm going to bring the yarn up towards me in front of the needle here. And then I'm going to put my needle in up, up here. So not down there for the gauze stitch, but upwards. Then I'm going to take this yarn, which is at the front here, wind it round the needle. So it's coming up and around. And then I'm going to pull it down and off. Now we're going to go back to the plain stitch, the garter stitch, take the yarn around to the back of the work, I put the needle in under, around, come under the needle and off and then we do another purl stitch. So we bring the, the yarn to the front of the work, put our needle upwards into the stitch, then the yarn around and pull it down and off. Then we need another plain stitch and we're coming back round. So if you look here, you can tell the difference between a plain and purl stitch. And this is very useful because whenever you're knitting, to be able to read your stitches is so important. So I just want to show you here, you can see a little V and a little V there. Now that is a plain stitch and the little one with the bump like this, that's a purl. So we're doing plain and purl. So next one off the blocks will be a plain stitch. So I've got the yarn at the back of the work here. I put my needle in under, bring the yarn around, come under and off. And then we've got a purl stitch. So I bring the yarn to the front. We go right up into the stitch, take the yarn around, come down and off and then back for plain we take the yarn around to the back of the work. So we go in, underneath, around, under and off and then we're going for a purl so bring the yarn to the front, we go up, around down and off and then we take the yarn back round for a plain stitch. In, around, under and off and back for a purl, bring the yarn to the front of the work. So when we say to the front of the work we mean closest to you and then we go up into the stitch, yarn around, down and off and then I'm going to take the yarn to the back of the work that's furthest away from you, 
for a plain stitch. In, around, under and off. So I'm going to carry on till I get to the end of this row and I'll meet you for row two. So we have done our first row of rib, uh, which if you remember is this bit down here. And so for the second row, what we do is we follow what we knitted the first time round. So where you have a knit stitch, you're going to knit, and where you have a purl stitch, you're going to purl. And if I just remind you here, these little bumps, those are your purl stitches, and the ones in between with a little V shape, which you can see there, that's your plain stitch, and the one with the bump, that's the purl. So we're going to knit the knits and purl the purls. So I'm going to start off with a knit stitch, I'm going to put my needle in, bring the yarn around, under and off, and then we're going to knit this purl stitch. So I'm going to bring the yarn around to the front, we take the needle up the stitch, bring the yarn around, and then bring it down and off. And I bring the yarn right round back to the back of the work to knit this knit stitch. There's the little V. So we knit that one. And then I'm going to bring the yarn to the front of the work to work this purl stitch. Put the needle up into the stitch, take the yarn around, and bring it down and off. And then I'm going to bring the yarn right round to the back again. Here's the knit stitch. We put the needle in, knit, yarn around, under and off. And then bring the yarn to the front of the work to knit this purl stitch. The needle goes up into the stitch, around and down. And take the yarn back around. And you can see the rib beginning to form. So there's two little purl bumps, two little Vs for the plain. So you have plain purl, plain purl, plain purl. So you will find that this is a bit slow going to start with, but you'll get the hang of it. Just read your knitting, read the stitches. So the next one here is a plain. So we put the needle in, take the yarn around, under and off. And then here we you know we've got to do a purl stitch. Bring the yarn to the front, put the needle up into the stitch around, down and off. Bring the yarn back to the back for the plain. That one here, in, around, under and off. And then we bring it to the front for the purl. Up, around, down and off. So you can see the rib is forming nicely. I'm going to meet you at the end of the row. Okay, so we're now going to work row three of the rib and I just want to show you how it's coming up now. You can see that it looks like a rib now. That's the row before. And um, we're going to work six rows of rib. So I shall start you off on row three and then we will meet up after row six. So following what I said before, the most important thing here to do is to read your knitting and read the stitches. And here, when we do a rib and we knit the knits and we purl the purls, the first one here is a knit stitch, then a purl, then a knit, then a purl. So remember you're looking for the bumps for the knit stitches and then the little V shapes for the plain stitches. So I'm just going to start off here, put the needle in, bring your yarn around, under and off. And for the purl, bring your yarn to the front. And then we're going to put the needle upwards into the stitch, bring your yarn around the top, down and off. Then you need to bring your yarn around the back again to work this next knit stitch, yarn around, under and off. Bring the yarn to the front of the work to knit up into this purl. And you will work like this. I have to say that when you're working with these very big needles, you know, it's quite tricky to be fast. So just take your time and you'll see that the, the rib comes really beautifully now. So I'm going to go knitting into that one. Yarn around, 
under and off. Bring the yarn around the front, up into the purl, yarn around, down and off. So that's the third row and you can tell that it's the third row because if you count the V's here, one, two, three. Three little V's on top of each other and if you actually look in there, you can see one, two, three pearl bumps buried away. So I will meet you back here when we're at six rows of rib. So we've now worked our six rows of rib and you can count up by counting these little V's. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's our six rows of rib. So the next section, I'll just show you here on the one that I've knitted, we do the six rows of rib and then we start to work in stocking stitch uh, or stockinette, which is just a one whole row of plain stitches and then the whole row of purl. So it's knit and purl and we're going to work 78 rows. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So when I say 78 rows, I'm doing 78 rows for my particular size of the pattern, which is uh, the extra large size. So check the pattern and see how many rows you need to do. Um, but for me, 78. So last row of rib is done. And now I'm going to start knitting the first row. So the first row is a knit row and we're going to knit all the way along. So I put my needle in underneath, bring the yarn around, under and off. And then even though you've got a pearl bump there, we're going straight across knitting the whole row. And so each stitch in, around, under and off in, around, under and off. And we just work the knit stitch all the way along the row. This is the beginning of our stockinette or stocking stitch section. So as we work, you can see the little V's appearing at the top. So even though You've got the pearl bumps. Now that we're working into just plain stocking stitch, we just knit along the whole row. Let's just look at that stitch again. We go in, around, under and off. And if you've done our how to knit video, you'll see exactly how to do this. We've also got um, a video to learn how to knit stocking stitch, stockingette, um, which is what we're doing here. So in, around, under and off. And I want you to work the whole row with a knit stitch. And I shall meet you at the end. Okay, so we're ready to start the second row of stockinette or stocking stitch with a purl row. And I just want to show you here on my swatch on the one I've knitted earlier, this side with the little V's, we call this the right side of the work. This is the knit stitch, as you can see. And on the wrong side of the work, this is the reverse of stocking stitch, the purl side. And you can tell it's the purl because it's got the little bumps. And so what we're going to do now is to start knitting the first purl row. Now we've done a little bit of purl in your uh, rib, but we're going to do a whole row now. So instead of taking the stitch th underneath the needle, we're going to take the stitch into the top of the stitch. We're going to put your needle into the top of the stitch with the yarn facing you at the front of the work. Mm -hmm. Take the yarn around the needle, down and off. So again, I'm going to take the needle up into the stitch, yarn around, pull down and off. Go up into the stitch, yarn around, pull down and off. And you can see that it's creating the little pearl bumps on that side. So we do up into the stitch, bring your yarn around, down and off. I'm just going to do a few more of these stitches for you and I shall see you at the end of this row.
So I have now done two rows of stocking stitch on top of the rib and it's tricky to see just there but the rib ends and here is where our stocking stitch begins. You can see it better on the back where you can see the purl after the rib. And so we work like this, alternating one row of knit, one row of purl, until you reach the right size for your size of jumper. Now mine um, for the extra large is 78 rows. I just want to show you how to count a row um, so that you're ready to do that. All that you need to do when you count rows is just count the little Vs. So each one of those little Vs is a row. So when you're counting after you've worked the, um, the back of your jumper, just count these little rows until you've got the right number for your jumper size. So I shall see you when I'm ready to work the front shaping of the jumper. So I'm just about to start um, the v-neck shaping for the front of our sweater. Now I've knitted on my size, which is a, the extra large, 54 rows, but in your pattern, it'll tell you exactly how many rows to knit to get up to the point where you start the shaping. So the first thing we're going to do is to knit along to a certain point and work on just one section of stitches. And this is really common when you do a v-neck um, is to work on one section of stitches at a time. So I'm gonna knit 24 stitches and meet you about here. So I have knitted 24 stitches into the front. The next instruction is to knit two together, knit one and slip one. So we're going to do that next. So remember when we knit two together, we just put our needle into the two stitches, one, two, just slide it in as if to knit, yarn around, come under and off. So there's our knit two together. Then we're going to knit one. And then the instruction is to slip one. And we're going to snip it, snip it, listen to me. We're going to slip it knitwise. So when we talk about doing something knitwise, we talk about doing it this way through the stitch. When we talk about doing something purlwise, we do it up in the stitch. So this one is a slip knitwise. Just going to put my needle in and slip the stitch. Now very often um, on the side of a seam or somewhere you end up with it. You can some knitting patterns will call for a row of slipped stitches. This gives a really, really nice edge. So that's why we've slipped a stitch there. So now we're going to work on just these stitches on this needle. So I'm going to just push those out the way on the other side, push them out of the way, and we turn the work around. So even though we haven't worked the whole row, that's fine. And here we are on the back of the work. Um, while we're here, I just want to show you, I changed balls halfway up the front, and I've just tied the yarn together and then left two long tails. And I'll talk to you about these tails at the end. Okay, so our next row, um, which is sort of half the stitches, is a purl row. So we're going to purl all the way along here. Now, even though you've got a slip stitch there, we're still going to purl it. So I'm just going to put my um, needle in purlwise, purl it, and purl all the way along this row and when you're on the wrong side there's no shaping on these um, wrong side rows in the in the neckline so it's just a straight purl all the way along so I will talk to you when I get to the end I have purled just to the end of the row now and I'm going to turn the work around and if you just spread it out a little bit you can see there is where we had our um, where we sort of knitted to and did our first bit of shaping. So now we're on the next row of shaping and so what we're going to do is to knit 23 stitches Ooh. and so I'll meet you when I've done the 23. Right so we're going to start the next working the next row 
on the neckline decreases and this one is the first one of the sort of shaping as we go along. So we've done the first one, the first row of setup. So we've got the V placement and now we're going to do the next row. So in my size, I'm going to knit 23 um, to take me up to the neckline. And once you get the hang of this, um, the way that the neckline decreasing works, you'll be often racing. When you slip something knitwise, you, you know, when we knit, we go this way. When we slip something purlwise, we go this way. So I'm just going to, it's this easy. You just put your needle in purlwise and slip it. And there it is, slipped around. So then we turn the work, remembering we're still working on this side. And this row is a purl row. So I'm going to purl that stitch, even though it's a slipped stitch, I'm going to purl it. And I'm going to purl all the way along this row. Um, I just want you to see it looks so neat coming back here for this v-neck. It's going to look absolutely lovely. So I shall meet you when I finish this purl row. Back to the end. Okay, so I'm on to the next row of the next shaping and we're going to do this one again together and then you just carry on with the next shaping until the pattern tells you to stop. And um, the, the depth of the V and, and how many rows you do this with is entirely dependent on the size that you're knitting. So I'm going to, this next instruction for me on the extra large size is to knit 22 stitches. So I'm going to knit 22. And then we're going to do the shaping um, as we've done on the previous rows. We'll do it once more together. 22. And that gives us, as we had before, four stitches before the V-neck. And so as we've done with the other rows, what we're going to do now is to knit two together, knit one, and then slip the last stitch purlwise. So let's do it together. To knit two together, take the point of your needle, put it through those two stitches together as if to knit, bring the yarn around under and off, so that's knit two together, then we knit one and then if you remember from the last row we're going to slip this last stitch purlwise which simply means take your needle up into the stitch and pull it off that way. And you can see it's already giving us a really really neat edge. So then we turn the work and we're going to purl along this side of the front. And remember, even though we slip this purl stitch, we're still gonna knit it, uh, still gonna purl it on the way back. And that just gives us such a nice, neat edge. So I'm gonna purl that stitch, and then we just purl all the way back. Again, you might feel a bit clunky because these needles are really, really big. But the benefit of having really big needles and really big yarn is that the jumpers knit themselves nice and fast. So let's just have a look at that. You can see that's going to come up to be really, really neat with that slip stitch there. Right, so I'm going to carry on with my purl and I'm going to carry on with my neck shaping in exactly the same way until I reach the point where the V-neck is finished on this side and I'll meet you there. Right, so the next thing we do, we've done the shaping. All we need to do now is to knit the strap, which is the little bit that goes from the V-neck shaping up to your shoulder. So all you need to do to knit this strap is to work the right number of rows for the size of your jumper. So mine, I'm doing the extra large jumper and it's 11 rows. Knit and purl, just plain stocking stitch, stockinette as we've been doing. The only thing to remember is that when you get to this last stitch, it's a slip one purl wise which is what we've been doing all the way through this shaping but that just keeps the neckline nice and neat so knit and purl slip one purl wise for the right number of rows for your size and i'll meet you back here right so i've done my 11 rows and now what i'm going to do is just to cast off now this has actually brought me up onto a purl row which is fine um, so I'm just going to cast off, but just in a regular way. So I'm just going to purl that first one so that it's uh, uh, nice there. And then just take the first stitch over 
the second. So we knit a stitch, just a regular cast off will be fine here and lift the first stitch over the second. So remember you've done this cast off before, we're just going to cast off, um, I've actually come to the end of a ball here so might have to join on a new one, lift the first stitch over the second, so we just knit, lift the first stitch over the second, so I'm just casting off the top of this strap and um, that will show us, give us a nice edge to join later on. So join me again when I finish this cast off and we will start the shaping on the other side. Okay so we have done our shaping and knitted the 11 rows to take us up to the top of the shoulder there and we're going to do the same thing over here. So before when we did the shaping on this side we were working from the outer edge in so the shaping was done at the end of our rows but because we're going to work this side from the middle outwards the shaping comes from the beginning of the row. So the first instruction we have here is slip one purl wise, knit one, knit two together and then work the row. So the shaping this time happens at the beginning of the row. So the first thing we're going to do is just to use a new, just to reconnect the yarn. Now whenever you see a pattern that will tell you to reconnect the yarn, really truly all you need to do is to start knitting with the yarn and then always leave a fairly long tail and the reason for this and I'll show you at the end is that when you're sewing in ends the last thing you want to happen is for the ends to pop out later on when you're wearing it so it's good to leave a longer end not just because it's much easier to sew in a longer end even if you end up snipping a lot of it off so I'm going to hold that yarn here ready to start so we're going to work here. The first instruction is to slip the first stitch purlwise. So I'm going to put my needle in. Oh, it's going to get caught up there. Put my needle in purlwise and slip it off. And then got my new yarn. Oh, got a bit tangly. There we go. Got my new piece of yarn, and I'm just going to start. The next bit is just knit one, so I've just got a little loop of yarn like that. I'm going to pop it over the end, like that, and knit it. Now the next instruction is to knit two together. So I'm going to come into the second one of the two, put my yarn, my needle through the yarn as if to knit, knit, and there we go. So then I'm going to knit the rest of this row and I'll meet you on the other side. I've knitted that first row, here's the yarn that we attached and now I'm going to purl the way back in, in exactly the same way that we did on the other side and as I was saying earlier the, the only difference here is that the shaping is at the end, uh, at the beginning of our rows, whoopsie, I'm trying to hold these needles so I can show you what's going on and of course they're quite long so they're clanking about, I'm sorry about that. So let's work our way back up the purl row. Okay, so I just wanted to show you, I've come up to the end of this purl row. Um, this is where we started off. So, and this is our slipped purl stitch. So I'm just going to purl these two as normal. Now they sometimes, because it's a new piece of yarn, it can get a bit baggy, but don't worry about that because when we go on to the other side, just flip that round, this will tighten up. So we're on to the next row of shaping. So the next row of shaping comes up with the same thing. So we're going to slip one purl wise. So I'm going to put my needle tip into the stitch and slip it purl wise and then knit one and then knit two together. So those two knit together and then knit to the end of the row and I'll just show you here it looks a bit baggy that's because we've got the new yarn attached but when that's sewn in this will the, the tension will be just the same as on the other side there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this side 
of the sweater in exactly the same way that I've done this one. So I'm going to do the shaping and then 11 rows of plain stockinette to take us up to this point here. Don't forget to keep slipping your purl stitches all the way up. Right, so the next section of the jumper that we're going to work on is the sleeves. And I've made one here just to show you what the sleeve looks like. Um, it comes round, it's got this lovely shaping there around onto the cuff. So you can probably see it on my arm there. But this is what the piece of sleeve looks like. And we start off by casting on 40 stitches. I think all the sleeves for all the sizes have the same number of stitch cast on. So we cast on 40 stitches. Do you remember using the long tail cast on that we used at the beginning? Um, so we cast on 40 stitches and then we work in stocking stitch. Remember that's a row of knit and then a row of purl right up to a specific number of stitches. Now, for the size that I'm working with, I'm actually working up to um, about 34, 36 rows. But your pattern will tell you how many rows to just do. And then what we're going to do is a little bit of shaping. You can see here that the sleeve has a little section in the middle where we decrease stitches in two places. And that brings the sleeve in to this lovely shape and when we put the jumper together and we sew this together you end up with a sleeve shape like that and this lovely little shaping detail sits on the top of your arm so let's get started with our sleeve now i have started already um, with some slightly longer needles this time and i've cast on my 40 stitches and I've knitted 34 rows um, for the size that I'm doing. Now, when we start the shaping, the shaping only happens on the right side. So you will only be doing any decrease stitches on this side of the work when you're on a knit row. The second row of each one, the purl row, when you're working on the wrong side, is just a straight purl row. So let's get started and I'll show you how to do the shaping. Right, let's start our first row of a decrease and this to do this lovely shaping. So as I said before, all the decrease stitches happen on this right side, on a knit side. So here we go. So the first row, we're going to knit 16 and then knit two together. I've just got a little twisted stitch there. There we go. So I'm going to knit 16, so we do one, so I've knitted 16 stitches, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So the next instruction on the pattern is to knit two together. And it's very simple to do. We just pull out your two next stitches on the needle and then we're just going to slide the right hand needle between, underneath these two. You're literally going to knit these two stitches with one knit stitch together. So we put the needle through both yarn around, just a normal knit stitch, come under and off and you've knitted two stitches together and if you look here you can see the two stitches with just one on the top. So you've knitted two together. The next instruction is to knit four. So we're going to knit four stitches. So I've knitted four stitches and then the next instruction is something that's called a slip slip knit. and in the pattern you'll see it written down as SSK, slip slip knit. And it's a very simple stitch decrease to do. So we slip both of these stitches one after the other onto the other needle knitwise. So we slip it one, two, so we've slipped both of those and then we're going to knit them together. And to do that I'm just going to put my needle in, so I'm going to put the right hand needle through, as if we're knitting, round through the back loop and knit. Now, I think I will show you this in more detail when we're a little bit further on and you can see it better, but you can probably spot the eagle-eyed amongst you that this decrease points this way and this decrease points that way. Now. Next stage, we're going to knit 
the other 16 and I'm going to meet you at the end. So the second row um, of the decreased section of the sleeve is a pearl row. So every other row will be just a straight pearl with no shaping. So I'm just going to work this row and meet you at the other side. Right, let's do the next row of our decreases. So this time we're going to knit 15, knit two together, knit four and do a slip slip knit. So let's start off, I'm going to knit 15 stitches, two, three, so just have a little double check that I've got 15 on there, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirty, forty, fifteen, that's fine. And then we're going to do the knit two together. So I'm going to take my right hand needle, poke it through the next two stitches as if you're going to knit, so they're both sitting there, take your yarn around and then just pull it under and off. So two stitches knitted together, you can just see the two there. Then I'm going to knit four, one, two, three, four, and then we're going to do the slip slip knit which brings us a decrease here that leans to the right. So I'm going to slip the two stitches knit wise like we did before. One, two, and then the easiest way to do it is take the left hand needle and poke that into the front of those two stitches like this. So this right hand needle looks like it's knitting and then we knit them together. And so there we have the slip slip knit. And then we have 15 to knit on the other side. So when I've finished this 15 on this side, I've got a pearl row and I'll meet you to do the next decrease. So we have worked our decreases, one coming to the left, one coming to the right, and when you finish up the sleeve this is what you get. Um, a nice channel in the middle and it comes in there. I'm going to carry on with my decreases until I get to the moment when we're going to cast off and that is if you follow the pattern it'll be a knit eight and then knit two together, knit four, slip slip knit and knit to the end. So I shall carry on with my decreases and meet you at this point where we're going to cast off. So here we are, we've done the decreases and the last uh, row was a uh, knit eight and then do the decrease and a knit eight. So we're ready to cast off. Now if I just show you here on my finished version, um, you can see the way the decreases come and sometimes I get this wrong because it's upside down, but basically the slip slip knit leans to the right and a knit two together leans to the left. And that's how you end up with this lovely shaping that comes into the middle there. So even though we're on a pearl side, we're going to cast off just in a regular way. So I've done that decrease and you could cast off in pearl. Um, I'm not going to show you how to cast off in pearl because this is like your first ever jumper. So we're going to cast off, even though we're on a pearl row, we're just going to cast off as normal. And if you did the how to knit video, you'll remember how to cast off, but I'm just going to show you now. So ignore the fact that we're on a pearl row, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to knit a stitch, knit the second stitch, and lift the first stitch over the second. So I want you to knit a stitch, lift the stitch over the next one. So knit one, knit the first one, or just lift the first one over the second. Knit one, lift the stitch over the second. And we work like this just along the row. Knit and lift over. And then when you're left with one stitch on there, pull it out nice and big. You can snip the end off. I'm actually going to let the whole ball through. Snip off the end, pop it through, and then just pull. And there we have the second sleeve, neatly cast off, ready to put together in our jumper. We've now got to the very exciting point where we've knitted 
all the component parts to put this jumper together. So we have two sleeves. Um, this is the back that we started at the beginning and you'll notice basically we did the rib and then we did, I did in my case for this size, 78 rows of um, stocking stitch or stockinette and then cast off just on the top so that's the back and remember this is the lovely v-neck front that we made so we're going to put all these things together but before we start putting them together I want to talk to you about ends and how to sew in ends now when you're knitting obviously inevitably you're going to run out of a ball somewhere along the row it is best practice if you can possibly manage it to keep all your changes of yarn balls at the ends of the rows but sometimes that's just not possible actually I remember my granny saying to me you know uh, you know in the war we couldn't waste wool we couldn't wait you know leave a long bit at the end we had to change balls in the middle of the row and sometimes that does happen so what I've done here is um, when I've changed a ball in the middle I've actually done it just with a, a simple knot there are lots and lots of ways to change balls you can graft the ends together for a really really neat join there are lots of different ways but this just for the purposes of this first jumper and it's very nice and super chunky ball I have done a little knot to change balls and just carried on but that leaves you with a problem of a knot in the middle of the row so uh, and an end to sew in now do you remember somewhere along the line I think I said to you it's really important to leave long tails don't snip your ends off like that because if you have ends like that it's going to be very difficult to sew in the ends to hide them away so a nice long tail like this is easy to work so I'm going to show you how to sew these in I've got here a darning needle a tapestry needle easiest way to thread one of those is to fold the yarn over the top and pinch it pull out and then just slide that little folded bit through the needle and here because it's quite a big yarn we've got all these nice sort of ridges of the pearl rows I'm actually going to just weave these ends up and down into the pearl rows to hide this end so you won't be able to see it from the front you won't be able to see it from the front um, and so just thread the needle and then just really gently just go up and down a bit up that row maybe down to there maybe up there and the thing with this is there isn't a sort of a set number of weaving ins that you should do as uh, that used to people was used to say oh just weave it in six up and downs and then you'll be fine and it'll never come out but actually you can tell whether it's securely in or not um sorry that's my dog in the background so I'm just going to snip that off there and if we look on the other side you can't see really where that's gone in and then I'm going to do the same thing here just going to thread the yarn needle and we're just going to weave it in up and down you can even just go from side to side see it's just sort of pick the knot up there and actually you know people say oh I hate sewing up I hate weaving ends in I love weaving ends in it's just a really nice way Polly, of um hiding the ends away see that's a very nice sort of little vertical um, horizontal way of weaving that one in so I'll just snip it off there and on the other side you might sort of notice it's slightly thickened but you don't actually see it once you're wearing it and it's on so I've got one more of those to do up here and once we get to the end there I'm just going to snip that off right so I'll just weave this in and we'll start the sewing up now the first bit that we need to do to sew up is the shoulder seams and I've put the two pieces of jumper together here um, so you match up the top of the back and the top of the front and I just want to, I've sewed this one first so I can show you this is what mattress stitch looks like we're going to use mattress stitch when you've sewn it it looks like I mean it's obviously you can see that there's a join but it's a very flat join and on the 
wrong side this is what it looks like mattress stitch so it's actually quite it looks like quite a big seam underneath but I'm going to show you how to do it on the other side so the first thing that we do is we turn turning this giant great big jump around so that you can see the seam that I'm going to stitch here and so it's always good to invest in a few big pins before you start something like this so that you can secure either end of where you're going to sew and we do this on the right side of the work um, and I'll show you why now I'm going to put a couple of pins in so we match up the shoulder, the shoulder seam right from the end there take it along and pop a pin in so you can see where that sort of secures it as you go along and then we're going to start at this end I'm just going to check that you can see that on my camera to make sure um, there you go so that's fine I've got a piece of um, yarn threaded with my tapestry needle now there are a few different kinds of stitches you can use for sewing up I'm going to show you mattress stitch um, some things some people use a whip stitch which goes underneath these little ends of the rows you can use a crochet hook to do this um, but this is mattress stitch which is a, is a really good one to learn and what it does is it uses the bars that are in between these rows so if you dig in down here there's the little sort of pearl bump from there it is from the row behind and by catching these little bumps in between the rows that sort of folds that seam inside and gives us a, a pretty flat seam. So I'm going to start off over here um, by finding a little bar, there it is, the little bar in between these two end rows. So I'm just going to pull my yarn through that first little bar and as usual leaving a bit of a tail because you know we're going to have to sew that in later on and then with the right sides facing find the matching little bar on the other side and sometimes you have to do a little bit of digging but it's there oops where are we that will do I'll stick it into that one there and pull your thread through now dig into the next row and find our little bar let's have a look where you go there he is there it is and pull through and this is quite nice this is because when you when you do this you can see the zigzag working I'm going to come over to the other side and find the little bar in between there there it is and pull that through I'm going to leave this nice and wide so you can see what happens then I'm going to come over to the other side and look for the little horizontal bar and there it is between this row and this row pick that one up and again I'm just going to leave this long so you can see what happens when you tighten up we come over to this side again find the little horizontal bar between the rows and pull it through and then when you reach uh, you do a few of these and then tighten up and that is how we work a mattress stitch just pull those up there go. and so I will see you when we get to the other end Okay, so now I have worked all the way along both shoulder seams and I'll just show you at the back there. That's what it looks like, that's what it should look like. Just a nice tram line there of that's the sort of enclosed seams. So it's quite a flat up here. Now, as with all of these things, you're gonna have ends to sew in. When you sew in the ends here and here, this is gonna be your neck seam so you just need to make sure that that is really nice and neatly sewn in now you know it's difficult to sort of describe how to do this but it's it's a sort of a combination of making sure that it's nice and neat and sort of common sense so obviously if you see a little bit of yarn that's sticking out somewhere you can just tack it together just make sure that you end up with a nice flat neat neckline I've got a, a stitch here and a stitch here I'm actually going to just put those two together so that that ends up nice and tidy there 
so that that looks quite nice coming up the neckline and then again just make sure that you bury your end neatly I'm going to do it inside so I'm going to come in here and just bury the end into the seam now on some jumpers you will have a sort of situation where you're going to pick up stitches for a rib around the neck and in fact um, that can hide a multitude of sins if you're stitching up underneath but I'm just weaving that little end in there I'm going to oops sorry just come up a little bit on the other side to secure it just so that it goes both ways and then I'm going to snip it off so that is a nice neat stitch there and then um, I've got another one this side I I do want to say actually at this point when you start to stitch your jumpers and things together you may well have very long tails in all sorts of different places along the seams that you can use to sew in each piece as you go if I was doing this at home and it was just me that's what I'd do but I want to show you just how to do it sort of with a really as if you weren't sewing in because you get, it's unpredictable how many ends you're going to have so I'm just going to um, sew in this end and we've got a sleeve that we're going to put on here so I'm just going to sew this end in here just like we have with all the others so that it's secure and it's not going to come out and again this is just another reason to have nice long ends Okay, so that one's stitched in nicely there so I'm going to sew in the ends on my other side and then we're going to fit in the sleeves right so our next sewing in job and I know you've got just a sea of pistachio here but it's a, such a big jumper um, we're going to sew in the sleeves so remember this is our sleeve piece I love these sleeves so this is the cuff of the sleeves so that's going to sit down at the bottom and this is the shoulder part of the sleeve now we've got to get the sleeve in the right place with the shoulder seam and the best way of doing that is we need to find the middle of the sleeve and pin it onto the shoulder seam so you'll need your trusty pins so we're just going to fold that in half so that you've got the middle point of the sleeve is there and I've put a pin in there so I know where it is I'm going to take that middle part and put it pin it to the shoulder seam there so I know where it is and then just stretch out the rest of that seam and put a pin, put some pins I think, um, further down so that you know exactly where these seams are going to join. I'm just putting them in just in, in chunks along the way. I'm going to slide it round. I'm sorry about this with my camera angle. My pins are coming out. There we are. Hang on. So just so I know where I am, because we're going to do this with mattress stitch, which is what we've done before um, in our shoulder seams and it's most important really that you just get the middle pin there right bang in the right place so that you know that your the sleeve is set into the right place now these are just sort of flat uh, sleeves in some jumpers they're shaped and curved and this is a bit of a dropped shoulder sleeve so it's just a nice straight edge to stitch and sometimes you have a raglan sleeve which is a sleeve with a sort of a diagonal shaping but this one's quite nice straightforward flat sleeve to sew in so i'm going to do what we've done just now on the shoulder seam we're going to work in exactly the same way we're going to find the horizontal bar in between the sleeves there so remember we we picked up these little horizontal bars there but this time we've got a slightly different situation on this side because we're working with one load of stitches going that way one lots of verticals one lots of horizontals so what we're going to do in this case is we're still going to pick up the bars but we're going to dig around and just find them 
in between the stitches going up vertically and there are lots of different schools of thought you can pick up two stitches to one you know not every single row if you don't want them to be too tightly so you could maybe do two go in between two bars on each side and one on the other uh, all kinds of things and in the pattern it'll tell you about that but I'm just going to start off we'll have a look and see how we go with this one so actually I think what I'll do is I'm going to put a pin in just to secure that these pins are dropping a little bit but it's always good to try and find these long pins and sometimes you know you can get them on a freebie on the front of a magazine or just buy a, a pot of long pins now I found the first um, horizontal bar there because we're going to be doing mattress stitch so this seam will be enclosed and just pull the yarn through now I've given myself a nice long piece of yarn to sew up with so I found that first horizontal bar here now this time I'm going to be looking for the horizontal bars so to enclose this seam here this row going to look for one up here digging into there so let's have a look and find I think there's one just there there we go so work so that you enclose the first row so look for your bars in here and just pull the yarn through and then we're going to do exactly the same thing going to come over onto this side and so we've got one in here so we're going to look for one in there there it is so I'm going to pick that one up pull the yarn through and then have a look on the other side I'm going to pick this one up there just at the other side of that row and again you know we're now working with a big long piece of yarn because we've got to get all the way down there so just take your time this is not something to do when you're in a rush this is something to do when everything's quiet and there's nobody around and you can really focus so there's our next horizontal bar in the next one we pull it through there and again I'm just letting the stitches stay like this so that we can pull them tighter when we get there a little bit going to look over this side there's our next horizontal bar so just pull it through here can you see how that's working out and remove that pin now but just keep working steadily and then when you've got a little section just pull it through and you get a really nice neat finish so I will see you at the end of this row right I just wanted to show you so I've got to the end of sewing my sleeve in here and I'll just show you the other side there you go you can see on the inside you can see the seam is nicely enclosed that's the shoulder seam meeting that one so with both the sleeves sewn in I've left my yarn attached there the next thing we're going to do is to bring the jumper down so that we're going to work on this side seams and when you again because this is such a big bulky jumper um, it's hard to show you all of it in together but let's see what the next job is once you've sewn in the sleeve so we have the sleeve sewn in here nicely and there's the v-neck the next thing to sew together with our mattress stitch same way is down the side of the sleeve and down the bottom of the sweater so that you finish off this nice long big seam now the chances are that it's going to be much easier for you to work in shorter pieces of yarn I've kept this piece on there so that I can do mattress stitch up there or come down the side but it's exactly the same process so what you might want to do for example is we're going to work the rib and then come up to the armhole and then across the sleeve so that you know that this seam is going to match perfectly so number one the trusty pins pin the bottom of the rib together and then mattress stitch up to the armhole if you wanted to you could put a pin up there so it works all the way up there I'm just to make sure I can get this all on so that you can see but it's exactly the same process find the edge find the little horizontal bar inside the seam 
match the hem together at the rib, match a stitch up to the armhole and then down to the end of the cuff. So I'm going to meet you when we've done all this sewing up on both sides. Happy mattress stitch. You're all sewn up, your ends are sewn in and you're ready to wear. This gorgeous sweater comes from a pattern from Viking Hits. You can download it just here. Uh, it's a free download and it contains two designs, this one and also a colour work top. That will be a great progression from this first sweater to something a bit more complicated. I hope you've really enjoyed this tutorial. Leave us a comment, tell us what you thought and don't forget there'll be lots more exciting things coming up on the Lovecraft channel. Happy knitting!